All right, come Shout on. Out. What else you got? I'm ready to go. Shout out to Big D. Let's see. Uh, we got some Jonathan Taylor questions. Uh, do we you did just talk about the Colts, so maybe a relevant topic. We haven't talked about Jonathan Taylor as like basically being a buy right now. I did kind of want to like bring that up at some point because we've been getting a lot of questions about should I trade Jonathan Taylor? You know, should like no. A bunch of people like fucking trading Jonathan Taylor right now. That tells me like you should go trade for Jonathan Taylor right yep. now. Yep. Like, and, and then coming off of another inactive week and a bad stat line the week before that, he's been injured. He the was Colts injured sucked. that last week. The Colts absolutely suck. Like, yeah, the line stinks. Offensive line. We just did uh, no quarterback. What to speak of? We just did the rankings video for running backs last week. Go check that out. We had him still at number one overall. So that would tell you that we are down to buy Jonathan Taylor. So this guy, let's see, Aaron Conley says, what would you guys need for Jonathan Taylor in a full rebuild? Uh, was offered two firsts. What would it take for you to move him? What I don't understand is why you'd be moving the young stud running back in a full rebuild. Well, you know, I've like that's kind of what I, I'm like. I want to rebuild around Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, sh- sure. I mean, I, I that. I understand that to a point, but if it takes you two years from here to rebuild, then where's John? What Jonathan Taylor do for you? Won you some games that you didn't want to win, and then what? Has th- how, how old is so he? So then, but that, but how that, old is but he? Three years from point, now. What do you? I mean, you're trying to get Jonathan Taylor with one of those two first. So why wouldn't you just take Jonathan Taylor? What do you mean? Like the best you can hope for with using those picks is to get Jonathan Taylor. Which the argument against that would be that you don't have to use those picks to draft players. You can turn them into somebody else that you like. But like, you know, sure. If, if not one, Brees Hall, if, if one of those first, maybe you could turn them into Brees Hall. If one of those first is the one one, sure. Then that's a different story. But just two random first for Jonathan Taylor? No, I'm just gonna hang on to Taylor. All right, so he'll be in two, and he'll be he's he's twenty three. He'll be twenty four at the end of the season. So if it takes you two years to rebuild he'll that team, he'll be twenty four at the beginning of next season. Well, he'll, he'll be twenty six. He's January birthday. The problem is, is if I'm in the rebuild, I'll just I I I'm fine if that like if you have a bunch of other assets and you can reset it without that, that's cool. But like you may need Jonathan Taylor to be that reset. And then I'm not saying that I necessarily don't want to build around Jonathan Taylor. I'm just saying I don't need to build around Jonathan Taylor. I could build around some other things. And then in two years, I could go buy another veteran running back who's 26 years old from somebody else who isn't as good. And finally, instead of being in collection mode of picks and young players, I'm now in I'm going back to the normal mode that I'm in where I'm selling picks and acquiring things, older guys and trying to win, you know. I mean, if you're if you're trying to if you're talking about a two year rebuild, then I don't think this is the time to sell Jonathan Taylor. I mean, you no, you probably shouldn't sell Jonathan Taylor, and I wouldn't sell him for two firsts. Like, it's not enough. You got to wait. I, I'm no, no way. Like he's he's been the dynasty overall number one for like the last two years. Right. He's still good. It's not that I'm I'm not in any way, shape, or form hating on Jonathan Taylor, but I mean, you know, you're rebuilding. You you. The run holding on to, to to a running back in in the middle of a rebuild, you know, I, I rebuilt and I, I held on to Swift. I'm ready to go next year, and I got Swift. I've been pretty close to selling him a few times, uh, but probably gonna hang on to him. That's the the only big time running back that I kept throughout that rebuild, and it's because I drafted him. I didn't even want to draft him. I just accidentally drafted him <laughs> because he was the only guy left. Like I want, I tried to trade up a million times and not get Swift in whatever class that was. And I traded up to get Swift. I got Swift, and I haven't traded him yet, but I haven't not considered. I, I sold every other person on my team and had a bunch of picks this year, got a bunch of picks next year, and I got a core group of younger guys that are really working, and it's like, all right, well, you know, in a year or two, the guy who has Jonathan Taylor in that league's team is probably going to be shitty. So I'm going to go ahead and buy Jonathan Taylor when I'm ready to start winning again. And he's 26 and still kicking dicks in. Right, right. Brandon Murray said in two to three years, you just go buy Taylor for a second, LOL. I, I don't know if he's fucking he's, awesome. He's going to yeah. be worth more than a second at that point. But I get your point. Um, Mike Oxlong says 12 team, one QB, start seven. Give Drake London and a late 23 first. Get Jonathan Taylor all fucking day. See ya. What was that name again? Mike Oxlong. Oh, okay. Uh, what was the Drake and a late first. Yeah, Jonathan let me, Taylor. Let me get Taylor. Sure. Yeah. That's buying low on Jonathan Taylor. That's like... It's two first. Yeah. Yeah. 
A little bit, little bit more than two firsts. Probably. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm not, I'm not necessarily... You are correct in the assumption that I think you should be buying Jonathan Taylor. But I'm not just going to sell him for him. 80 cents on the dollar. No, no, no. That, 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 I'm rebuilding. I hate that we even have to say that. Like, you shouldn't be selling him for 80 cents on the Somebody's dollar. Somebody's asking it. Right. I know. I know. I'm, not, I'm yeah. just like... We should just be able to be like, look, Jonathan Taylor's a stud. Let's not sell him for anything. You know, what, what's the what's like the going price for like the best couple guys in the league pretty much off the rip? It's three firsts. I mean, I once sold Michael Thomas for four first two years like ago. Like three firsts is the standard to buy one of those like top tier guys. You, you know, it's going to take some semblance of trying to get to that sort of value to be able to buy one of the top guys. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's what Jonathan Taylor should be. And if you can't get that right now, and you're not getting the respect for it. We're saying that there's some opportunity to buy low. So the guy who's buying, who's, who's poking around for Jonathan Taylor right now on the low is either just the guy who always sends bad offers or one of the better teams in your league. Cause that's what they should be doing. Yeah. Cause there are plenty of people who are going to be panic selling all of these plays. Trent Richardson now, according to the internet. Um, and maybe he wasn't as good and is the worst. There's a lot of, he's the worst first round pick ever in a rookie draft in a in a, uh, in a startup draft or Are we having you know. a Trent Richardson off between Taylor and Najee Harris I mean that's it's anybody who stinks now for any period of time is after being good Trent Richardson yeah I just I can't I can't with the with all that but no Jonathan Taylor I saw Jonathan Taylor at the senior bowl and he was fucking awesome that's all I'm saying shout out to Ridley Truther <laughs> senior bowl um but yeah no you can't you can't you can't say it you can't send off Jonathan Taylor without getting the hall. There is maybe some opportunity because people do live in a recency bias, like a redraft world or a redraft life in a dynasty world is, is how some people really do. They live week to week on values. And, and, and Hey, if you have the time, you should be sending out trades week to week on, on the market going like this. Cause you might catch somebody who's, you know, hates this, who's upset about this team and two weeks have gone by and they haven't won. And, and, you know, they're like, fuck it. I just need to, I'll get rid of Jonathan Taylor. It's like, oh, okay. I'm going to grab that butterfly net, catch that beautiful butterfly. butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's keep it moving. What's next? You got anything else you want to talk about? Patriots? Just Colts? don't sell Jonathan Taylor for two firsts. Agreed. Just want to, just want to really just. All right, I have that one home. Let's let's one more trip around with Jonathan Taylor, the one one this year or Jonathan Taylor. Twenty, you're talking about Bijan. talking about Bijan Robinson or Jonathan Taylor. Bijan, Bijan. I need to get depends that right. if you're Bijan. into mustard or not. It's Bijan. I don't like mustard. But like I, the dog, I want to get his name right. <laughs> yes, Bijan. Because <laughs> he's he's got a he's got a dog in there. For sure. He's got that dog in him. For sure. It's There's a little Bijan. Definitely. <laughs> it's definitely a, a, a meme with the dog inside with the x-ray. I'm so sick of that meme. It's got to be a picture of a Bijan <laughs> Yeah, For sure. Um, I hate those dogs. All right. Terrible. So what's the, what's the answer I think to the I'd question? Want, I think it's closer than I want it to be, but I would need a little sprinkle. I would need something on top of that one-on-one. I agree. That's because that, because I don't know where he's gonna play, where where Robinson's gonna play at in so we have twenty three. Fair, and it could be in Texas. Who knows? Houston? No, just Texas. Oh, Austin. coming back to Texas. no fucking way. No way. I'll never bet. Know. I will bet. You never know. He could be making. He's making probably really really good money right now in Texas, and they're about to get Arch Manning. And what do you want to bet? Reboot. What, I'm just not. What do you want to bet? I'm I'll just bet saying you anything you want. Maybe there's Fire a the couple of these sure. guys. I'm. Not, I don't want to bet you. I'm just saying that maybe there's a couple <laughs> yeah. of these high profile guys who are fucking caking it up and loving life in in college and can make some money. You know. I mean, Bryce Young's making more money than Jalen Hurts. Yeah, Bryce Young's about to get fucking paid. He's getting paid, is what I'm saying. Like he's, he's about get, to get. He's going to get Hurst more paid. Isn't getting paid enough. That's what it really comes. Well, down sure. To I'm just. I'm equating a guy who's in the pros right now to guys who are playing in college. But he'll be a top five pick. It, yeah, it doesn't he's matter. About to get 25 million guaranteed. B one one is Bijan. Bijan isn't about to get 25 or, million guaranteed. I'm not talking about Bijan. No, but but but, Bryce but, Young. but Will Bijan be a first round yes, pick? Yes, yes. Because you probably seems, can get more in yes. college seems than that, like even it. that first, late first round pick, right? Well, With especially NIL? in Texas, right? And you got all them like Texas chicks at you school. Just, you you know? just never know. Anyway, 
Bijanor, you said you you you, you, you think it's he closer. He still wants than Jonathan Taylor. I still want Taylor. I need a little something something on top there. So him and I have a team. I wouldn't trade the roster that I have with just about any other team in the in the league. But we're fucking losing. We can't buy a win. Um, just had all the wrong injuries at all the wrong times. Can't put a lineup together to save our lives. Trade market's terrible. We traded away our first round pick because we got a good roster and I, we figured, hey, you know, maybe worst case scenario, it's one six. There's some bad teams in the league and we're we're right at the bottom of the league. We're terrible. So would you would you trade that to get your own pick back? We have Jonathan Taylor. Would you send that out if you could get your pick back? I just said no. I know. No. I'm just. I painted the scenario for you, though. You know. If I did, if I'll I trade Mixon to get that pick, but that's never gonna happen. It's never gonna. If I did that, I'd be fire sailing everyone on my team. I don't want to fire sail. I tried to, sale I tried to do team. that. I tried. I don't to do want to trade Jonathan Taylor either. I, just, I tried to do that in a league where I was like one and four to start the season with. I traded Dalvin and Mike Evans and John and Josh Jacobs, and I've won three in a row now because I traded for players who are good. Right. I read a tweet that someone said, I traded all my good players in Dynasty. Now what? Right. Well, th- this, is, <laughs> yeah. this isn't that scenario. And I don't know if I'm saying just trade and trade, but you, sure. could, you could get, you have a good team already and you could potentially get younger for like the best prospect since Saquon Barkley, maybe. Yeah. So that's really the thought process there. You could get two years, three years younger and maybe just get Jonathan Taylor or Saquon Barkley all over again. Because I don't even know that Jonathan Taylor had Bijan hype. No, he didn't. He did not. Because like you said, on the ranking show, CEH was able to unseat yeah. him in some people's minds. I was in a league where I got him at the 102. Love that shit. Yeah, it was great. Shout out Shane Manoa. That's, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't make that move in every league, but I'd be fine making that move. Let me get a you really got to. You really got to. Yeah, that's too much of a risk. Is it what happens if you're sitting there with the 102? Sure. No, no, no. You got to have the 101. You got. It's got to be the 101. I can control my own. It's my my pick that I'm getting back. I can kind of so control no, that. So now you're just. I don't think oh. it's going to be the 101 though, man. In this particular. No, I mean, league, but I so. could control that. I could trade away two more players and then never win another game for the rest of the year because I've got a bunch of hurt guys. We might still not be able to get the 101 based on that bottom. Yeah, I'm just just throwing out. It's all about scenarios. This is really what fantasy really asshole scenario really one comes down to everything is like you can throw up all the trades that you want, but it's like it really comes down to the particular league and like nobody trades, you know, it'd be it's tough. So it's that's that's, how much is the buy in in that league? uh, It's one fifty. No, thanks. And then it's fifty. It's if it was uh, in that fifty dollar league. I think then you, you get fi- <laughs> then you get fifty dollars worth of fab money, and it's real money. So it could be a two hundred dollar pot. Mm. Who gets the pot? The winner. It goes. It goes. Some of it's total points, and some of it's uh, nobody cares. Yeah, I'm just. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a twenty dollar <laughs> league. It's not a twenty dollar league. Yeah. I don't really want to trade Jonathan Taylor in that league. I mean, we'll see. Would All you right. trade? Or just real quick, would you trade Brees Hall for the one on one? Just curious. For the one on one? Yeah. I think we're all relatively the same here. So, I, with Brees, you're pretty young already, so it's not like you know. You are coming off an ACL, but sure, whatever. It's not an Achilles. I could. I go e- multiple ligaments. I'd go either way on either. that. Fifty percent of the time, I'd go one way. Fifty percent of the time, I'd go the other. Fifty oh, percent of out. the time, every time. But. So those are the only two guys you wouldn't trade for the one one CMC you're trading for the one on one? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Just make sure we're on the same page. I just said I might trade John Taylor for the one. Fair enough. So. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Swift is probably the guy that you're slightly concerned about. You mentioned the backfield. Is anybody looking to get out of Swift? You can't I, right now. Like I guess if you want to, you you could be plotting your escape from him and certainly people are are out on him. I mean, people are fed up because it's always something with him. But I was reading something about, I saw some tweet, I forget who, was like he's in the process of ramping up from his injury. That takes four weeks. He's two weeks into it. The I, the, the PFF article that I read where they put out the, the all snaps and stats, they said that it he started off kind of hot and then it tailed off 
as the game went on, which is a, not a great sign for his health. Is yeah, he was definitely on a snap. He only count, played like three snaps in the second half or something like that. Right, not not very much as the game went on. So you don't love that, and he is always fucking hurt. And I get it, I get the frustration. But we, you know, we talked about him on the ranking show. Like he doesn't need a ton of snaps to fucking be good. He still is only twenty three years old. He'll be twenty four in January, so he's still a fairly young player. He can, he has the pass catching ability that everybody craves and loves and demands of their yeah. running back. And he is a phenomenal pass catcher. Yeah, he and played ten snaps, got eight points. He can score from anywhere at any point, and I mean, he just. He's dealing with these injuries, and, and you know, Keenan Allen was injury-prone until he wasn't. Now he's back with a hammy, but, like, there you had, like, a three- or four-year run of phenomenal Keenan Allen, and after a bad three-year run of just straight into the IR, right, of the storm. Swift, it's just like, you know, I get, I get if you're frustrated. Like, what's up with your team? Are you, like, ready to go now? What kind of return can can you find someone that's willing to respect the talent and give you fair value? It doesn't seem like right now is a great time to try and sell. I mean, if you were, I mean, I know you guys, and I'm probably not trying to get out on him either. But if you were trying to get out of him, what are you trying to get for him? Like another young running back, <laughs> like you know, like I, I, someone in the comment was talking about how you know anytime they're rebuilding, they're trying to sell any and all running backs, and I, I like I don't. I That's just, fine. I, I I can agree with that. There's no reason to to put that on your team of, of But he's he get, like a they, perfect they, buy for for a rebuilding team because he's not helping you win. Yeah, sure. If if, you know? if the cost is I guess low enough, but I mean it's just the amount of injury that happens with running back, you just don't want that's basically like an uninsurable asset on your team where, you know, you could get something for him if they're good. Somebody wants them, and then you can come back and buy the running back when you're ready to go. I'm okay with that. That's fine. Like, no, three years ago, I would have said no way. At this point, though, like, we need the running back position to be rejuvenized. Hopefully, we're about to get it, but I'm going to buy buy one or two when I need it instead of having to just – I'm going to continue to draft them in the, in the rookie drafts, even if I'm rebuilding, because if it hits, the value goes straight to the fucking moon. Yeah. Um, I feel like, I feel like if, if you were watching the – Alabama game. I think Gibbs gives you enough of what Swift is like that I'd be okay if I could move off on early first and l- and a little something on top of it. Yeah, I mean, Swift healthy is a is a top five player. Sure, point scorer. But so the problem is, is when is he healthy? Right. I think you got to wait. You got to hopefully he closes the season out strong and then is obviously healthy in the off season and then if you want to move off of them move off of them there because the the hypo sure. rebuild of like yeah. how many points you just said he had 10 snaps, 10, and, 10 eight snaps and eight points was, you know they'll be oh he's he's got you know 1.6 <laughs> fantasy points per snap he played you know and the, <laughs> that would be points per snap or off the you just you just need some stupid stat to come out that everybody fucking loves what is and he, then joe mixon you'll just take them all the you know that'll that'll carry the value all through off season or he's, you know, it's, you know, Swift's missed sixty six percent of yeah. all possible games, games played. played, and then you know, dollar bill says Swift for Javante Williams. Yes, uh, give me Swift. And there's Javante. Give me Swift. I have my, I have them right next to each other. I can yeah. really go either way. People just be trading. <laughs> They're just like, uh, I've got four firsts. I sold all my good players. What more moves do I need to make in this rebuild? Like, just sit, just sit for a minute. You know. Yeah. Stop trading away all your good players. You need some players on your team, even if you're rebuilding. You still got to. And they don't all have to be rookies from this past year, you know? Yeah. So many teams, so many people have hit me with, like, these are my wide receivers. And it's like every wide receiver from this last class. I'm just like. It's a good strategy, though. Is it? Yeah, for sure. I don't like it. You don't okay. need every wide receiver from a rookie class. Yeah, but you, no th- way. Well, that, that's if you keep all those wide receivers, that's the problem there. That's not the point of drafting all of those wide receivers there. You, what you do is is you fucking capitalize on every single one that value pops, and you you fucking move off of those guys. You keep one of the ones that you think's really good, and then anytime any of them pop, you keep selling them and keep acquiring more and more and get more than what you paid for plus a player, and that's how you you you, you get a fucking great rebuild going everybody wants these young wide receivers and yeah sure give me all of them and then 
Obviously, Jamison Williams hasn't panned out, and neither did Traylon Burks, but Garrett Wilson's doing fine. Drake London's value is going to hold just fine. Olave, you could sell for a lot. Dotson got hurt, but if he wouldn't have, that would have been an easy sell. Um, to, to, as far as, I'm not just saying, like, as far as rebuilding, like, some of these, you know, pick up, pick up the young guys. People are going to want them, and I'm, I'm fine with that. That's, that's a, I'm, I'm, I did that same thing, and now it's an auction, and it's a little different, but I bought pretty much every single rookie wide receiver. And well, it's if you're in an awesome. auction and you can get them boys cheap, that's one thing. But like trading for first and then, well, yeah, I'm, I'm essentially doing the same thing. I'm, I'm paying, I'm, I'm selling them all off to get auction dollars. <laughs> Some of these trades are fucking wild. I'm sell, I'm trying to get as many as the young guys as I can, and then sell, sell them off as I go. Keep one or two, draft a decent core, build a decent little core around those guys, and then just. Keep acquiring another good player and a pick and another good player and a pick. And then I'm going to come around this year and just be shutting it down in the draft and have a pretty good nucleus of guys and be really young and then running back, running back, running back, and let's go. What's the last couple things you want to talk about? I mean, let's talk about Joe Mixon. We should talk about Joe Mixon, yeah. right, I put him on the thumbnail, so we got (sighs) to... Mixon. (laughs) Five tutters. Best fantasy week of anyone this season, I think. is Probably will be, too. (laughs) What they said. Uh, unless Kamara goes off for six in the championship. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what, was, was that a Thanksgiving? We had Mixon, yeah, uh, maybe Christmas? I don't know, whenever the fantasy championship Oh, was. yeah, it was Christmas, sorry. We had Mixon on the on the show last week. We, were not, we, didn't we had him on, on yeah, show. we had him on. <laughs> He's definitely not coming on the show. <laughs> we had him in the RB rankings, and we were all a little down. We didn't know what to do with him. Like, where do you put him? Where do you slide him in? He was definitely coming down from where we all had him preseason. And then Casey said, you know, well, what if the next six weeks he's the RB1 where he's going to be right back up at the top of this discussion? Not, like, overall, but, like, back up properly rated. Well, he's on his way. I think he just, I think that counts for two weeks at least right there. Uh, what are you doing with Joe Mixon? If you've been rebuilding, right? You couldn't move him up to this point. We talked about how we, we couldn't get our early first back, and we haven't really shopped him for random first just yet. What uh, what are you doing with Joe Mixon? Holding? On a rebuild? I mean, I think you got to have to try and move him after this week. What are you trying to get? Trying we to pulled get up a, your fake trade thing. You're and trying to get a first. Plus, they had two firsts. Plus maybe a then, little bit, but before this week, you couldn't. You probably were hard-pressed to get one first. For Joe Mixon because nobody wanted to necessarily buy in because um, it hasn't been looking super great. Um, uh, Mixon for Kittle, I'm assuming that's tight end premium. Nah, well, I mean, I think I need you, you got to get you got to get a first plus, you know, Mixon, Mixon for, and a second for Brees. Give me Brees. I like that. How about Mixon for Gibson and a 2023 first? Say that again. Mixon and a 2020 Mixon. For a 2023 first and, and Gibson. Gibson. And Gibson? Is yeah. Gibson enough? I mean, I guess I might get... Seems where, you know, maybe where that first is, but I mean, that, yeah. that's that's like, that that's that's kind of what I'm... That's probably the value. That's what's properly valued. 23 right there, first probably. and Rashad White. Obviously, Gibson's more than Rashad White is, is right he? now. Yeah, I would say so. I think so. so. Had a disappointing probably week this so. week, though. Poor week this week, but McKissick was probably going to miss some time. And yeah. I don't know. PFF was like they're playing somebody bad next week. They're playing, they're week, playing the so Eagles. They'll be behind, they're playing the Eagles. Right. Monday Night Football. Which, we'll, know, be, we'll be uh, great. It's hard, to, it's hard to fucking predict game script or schedule strength. You'd I like mean, to think that the that the commies will be Kill playing. him. <laughs> he hasn't had a very good game. Good. Kamara. Sucks to suck. He's just fine. Yeah, no, he's but this good. Ravens D is balling the fuck out. Mixing, huh? Yeah. What do you got? What do you got? We gotta try and move him, right? Yeah. Oh man. yeah. I mean, I'm gonna be trying to move him this because we're we're in the shitter. So I'm I'm fine with with trying to move off of him. You get a first plus, you know, another okay player that that could have upside. Like Antonio Gibson. Like Antonio Gibson. I think that was right in the ballpark. I mean. Rashad White is has certainly been productive and look looks good on the field with with what he's getting. I don't know what's going to happen with them moving forward. Um, so, but you know, unless Lenny gets hurt, he's probably not going to really do anything for you this year. But you're probably rebuilding if you're making a trade like that. Yeah. Um, so I'd probably want a little bit more than Rashad White, but I mean that's basically a one and a two 
for for mixing with a yeah. with a hope of another running back who could you know maybe catch some passes be in your starting lineup it's probably all selling a little bit low on the potential of what joe mixon can be i mean obviously nobody's scoring five touchdowns but i mean if Mixon could just score a touchdown or, or you know just be a little bit more involved and catching a, passes now right he, he's he's caught a lot of passes this year which is really the only thing that's kept him kind of afloat um yeah and, and um uh, chris evans so a first shout, and shout a first out, and white captain america probably a little low but yeah um that's probably what what the value is about now to actually move off of him yeah so you're saying hold for a little bit longer well, I mean, Unless, you, you, I you mean, can, if you're competing, there's you should, obviously no reason sure, to trade right. him. You you're should press static, but you should press the issue a rebuilders. little bit this week and see if you get the juices flowing of of somebody getting reinvigorated. And the, the the overall box score of Mixon doesn't look absolutely horrible. So, like, if if somebody's going to trade for him and they had a big game and you're a shitty team and you click on it, it's not the worst ever. It's not like what it was last year necessarily, but um, well, this might not be the week to trade for him trade him because he's on a buy yeah well that's even like i got pollard in a league and me and big co are trying to ship him out and it's like you got an extra week that's just kind of sits right in the hopper that's of, true yeah. of like hey you can't get hurt this week you do anything he's bad. got the buy he's not doing yeah. anything bad you know right. he's still still last thing you look at he scored 50 points maybe somebody gets an injury too in that week so you get like a two a two uh a two week window that here lingers to, to, i like it to linger lingers. on that lingers. So. lingers man yeah hate them stink. What's, what's a, a, what's a G, right now? What's a G-Bert? Definitely lingering. <laughs> <laughs>